I knew this wasn't going to go quickly, but we're up to part three on the truths of Isaiah. And that's a book that not much attention is drawn to it, but the more I read it, it should have been more attention drawn to this book. But the scholars did. <laughs> At this part of the story, though, King Uzziah dies. And once again, a prophet comes to attempt to put the rebellious Israelites and Judeans on the right path into Yahweh's good graces. And again, they fail. We still see it woven into the Old Testament pages, the prophecy of the coming of the King of Kings. Yeshua Messiah. The book of Isaiah is filled with many wonderful prophecies of the Messiah. More proof that it's a whole book not a half book. Anyone telling you not to read the Old Testament is telling you wrong. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this book tells us much about the person and work of Yeshua Messiah. It was written some 700 years before Yeshua was born in Bethlehem. For this reason, some scholars call this the fifth gospel. <laughs> so to say in the year King Uzziah died is to say a lot. It is to say in the, in this year, a great and wise king died. But it is to say also, in the year, a great and wise king who had a tragic death also died. But it is also to say in the year, a great and wise king who had a tragic end died tragically. Isaiah had become somewhat discouraged and disillusioned at the death of King Uzziah because a great king had passed away. And in Israel's case, that was a big loss. Any waffling in the leadership, they went back to their sins. <laughs> I start today in Isaiah, the sixth chapter I start at the first verse in the year of the death of Uzziah the king I saw Yahweh Elohim sitting on a high and raised throne and the hem of his robe was filling the temple Verse 2, seraphim or seraphs were standing above him. Each had six wings. With two, he covered his face. And with two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew.
verse 3. And the one called to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is Yahweh of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the pivots of the thresholds shook from the sound of those who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I, I said, Isaiah, woe is me, for I am destroyed. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I am living among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, Yahweh of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, and in his hand was a hot coal. He had taken it from the altar with tongs, and he touched my lips, I mean, my mouth, and he said, look, this has touched your lips and has removed your guilt, and your sin is annulled or removed and taken away. And he touched my lips with it, that hot coal. This must have been painful. A burning hot coal applied to the lips. One of the most, most sensitive areas of the body. That's why kisses feel so good. <laughs> Yet, Nothing is written that Isaiah reacted in pain. Either there was no pain because of a special blessing by Yahweh Elohim, or the pain did not matter because of the majesty of the surroundings and the wholeness of his cleansing. It nowhere says that this is a dream or a vision. This is real. Isaiah knew he did not serve Yahweh Elohim like these seraphim or the burning ones. That's what they called them. Some deny that cherubim and Jer cherubim and seraphim refer to the same beings. But the name seraphim means burning ones. This is how they appear in Ezekiel, the first chapter. Turn to Ezekiel, the first chapter. The 13th verse. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of torches going back and forth among the living creatures. The fire was bright, and out of the fire went lightning. So Yahweh said, I will light a fire in you also. This is why a burning coal was used to purify Isaiah. Yahweh, who is a consuming fire, can only fitly be served by those who are on fire. Whether they can be angels or men. As Messiah said to John in Revelation, the third chapter, the 16th verse. Thus, because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I am about to vomit you out of my mouth. There is a difference. We have to be 
on fire for this word of God in our lives also. Continuing in Isaiah, the sixth chapter, the eighth verse. Then I heard the voice of Yahweh Elohim saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I, Isaiah said, I am here, send me. And he said, Go and say to this to stay, say, to say this to my people. Keep on listening and do not comprehend. And keep on looking and do not understand. Make the heart of this people insensitive and make its ears unresponsive. And shut its eyes so that it may not look with its eyes and listen with its ears and comprehend with its mind and turn back and it may be healed for him. Then I said, until when Elohim? And he said, until the cities lie wasted without inhabitants and houses without people, and the land is ruined and the waste. And Yahweh sends the people far away, and the abandonment is great in the midst of the land. And even if only a tenth part remain, Again, she will be destroyed like a terebinth or like an oak, which although felled, a tree stump remains in them. The seed of holiness will be her tree stump. Remember this, we will hear it again. It is a signal of sorts. Sovereign Elohim, how long? This is a logical question from anyone who is given such a difficult commission. Do I have to preach to those who won't hear and their rejection of my message will ultimately seal their doom? How long will I have to serve in that kind of ministry? until the cities are laid waste and without inhabitant. This answered the question of how long Isaiah was to preach. He should preach until destruction comes. He should preach in hope of the restoration of a remnant. This is against those who say all Israel will be saved. Here the, it says a tenth will be in it and will return. Even though Isaiah's ministry was difficult, it was not without hope. Nor is the plan of Elohim without hope for those who believe and obey his will diligently. Continuing in Isaiah, the seventh chapter, the first verse. Isaiah, the seventh chapter, the first verse. This happened in the days of Ahaz, son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, Razan, king of Aram, and Pekah, son of Ramalia, king of Israel, went up to Jerusalem for warfare against it. But he was not able to fight against it. And the day of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, 
Ahaz was a wicked king of Judah. What did he do, they say? Worshiping other gods, small g. And even sacrificing his own son to Molech. We see this in 2 Kings, the 16th chapter, the first verse. In the 17th year of Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, Ahaz, the son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. He did not do right in the eyes of Yahweh, his Elohim, as David, his ancestor, did. He walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, the bad kings. <laughs> he even let his son pass through the fire, thus killing him. I explain what that entails. Burning a kid alive in a fire. There were many ways to do this. I told of one a while back with the outstretched arms and they put the child into the arms and they pulled it into a pit of fire. And this was done, get this, to give praise to these demon gods. The pagan gods of the people around them. And they attempted, as they have done so many times, to do the things that the people around them did, to do this for Yahweh Elohim. He didn't accept that. But they didn't accept that he didn't accept that. Verse three, he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. He even let his son pass through the fire according to the detestable things of the nations which, which Yahweh drove out from the Israelites. Why did they think he drove them out? <laughs> For nothing? What they were doing. Verse four, he sacrificed and offered incense on the high places on the hills and under every green tree. More proof of the dangers of worshiping trees. Mm -hmm. The only good thing Ahaz seemed to do was to father Ezekiah, who became a good king of Judah. Ahaz was a cowardly, superstitious, and hypocritical ruler, one of the worst kings Judah ever had. Continuing in Isaiah, the seventh chapter, the second verse. Isaiah, the second, seventh chapter, the second verse. When it was reported to the house of David saying, Aram stands by Ephraim. They stand together in this. His heart and the heart of his people shook like the shaking of the trees of the forest because of the wind. Then Yahweh said to Isaiah, go out to meet Ahaz, you and Shir Jashub, your son. At the end of the conduit, conduit of the upper pool on the highway, 
of the washer's field. Then you must say to him, take heed and be quiet. You must not fear and your heart must not be faint because of these two stumps of smoldering firebrands, because of the fierce anger of reason in Aram and the son of Ramalia, because Aram has plotted evil against you with Ephraim and the son of Ramalia, saying, let us go up against Judah and let us tear her apart and let us lay it open and so bring it onto ourselves and let us install the son of Tabeel as king in her midst. One country is conquering another country and placing their choice of king over that country and they think God is gonna let that go? Verse seven, thus says Yahweh Elohim, it shall not stand and it shall not come to pass. For the head of Aram is Damascus and the head of Damascus is Raisin. And in 65 years from now, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. And the head of Samaria is the son of Remalia. He said this, the king wasn't even born yet. He was predicting it accurately because he knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. If you do not believe, then you will not endure. Do not fear or be faint hearted. It was hard for Ahaz to do this because he didn't see the situation the same way Elohim did. Ahaz looked at Israel and Syria and saw a terrible threat. Yahweh Elohim looked at Israel and Syria and saw two stubs of smoking firebrands. To Yahweh Elohim, they were all smoke and no fire. They were all smoke and no fire and they would cause you to cough a little bit, but that's all. Verse 10, and Yahweh continued to speak to Ahaz, saying, ask for a sign for yourself from Yahweh Elohim. Make it deep as Sheol, and make it as high as above. But Ahaz said, I will not to the king of the universe. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> and I will not be putting Yahweh to the test. Then he said, here, house of David, is it too little for you? to make men weary, that you should also make my Elohim weary? Make the master of the universe weary? <laughs> Ahaz wanted what he wanted. Any less was a failure and would collapse his kingdom. No more money then, no more power, the all, all of the things of this world that men lust after would end. King Ahaz and his people react with fear 
instead of with trust in Yahweh Elohim. They are shaken and unstable in their hearts. Despite the sign that was told to them by Yahweh Elohim through Isaiah their prophet. Your land of, your land, O Emmanuel. Emmanuel? <laughs> this refers back to the Emmanuel prophecy of Isaiah 7, 14. The land the, the Assyrians will invade does not really belong to Judah or to King Ahaz. It belongs to Yahweh Elohim. Ultimately, to the coming Messiah, to Emmanuel. Yeshua, the Messiah. Verse 14. Therefore, Yahweh Elohim himself will give you a sign. Look at what this sign is. Look, the virgin is with child. And she is about to give birth to a son. And she shall call his name Emmanuel with us. Heard that before? Verse 15. He shall eat curds and honey until he knows to reject the evil and to choose the good. For before the boy knows to reject the evil and to choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be abandoned. What will you be worried about? Verse 17. Yahweh will bring on you and your, on your people and on the house of your ancestor days that have not come since the day Ephraim departed from Judah. The king of Assyria. And this shall happen. On that day, Yahweh will whistle for the fly that is at the end of the stream of Egypt. And the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And all of them will come and settle in the rivers of the cliffs and in the clefts of the rocks and on all of the thorn bushes and watering places on that day, Yahweh Elohim will shave the head and the hair of the feet with a razor of the one hi hired from beyond the river with the king of Assyria. And it will even take off the beard. And this shall happen. On that day, a young man will keep a young cow of the herd and two sheep alive. And this shall happen because of the abundance of milk production. He will eat curds. For everyone that is left in the midst of the land will eat curds and honey. And this shall happen on that day. Every place where there are a thousand vines for a thousand silver pieces will become briars and it will be thorn bushes. One will go there with arrows and bow for all of the land will be briars and thorn bushes. And as for all of the hills that they hold with the hoe, you will not go there for fear of briars and thorn bushes. This is a, a, an abandoned land. And that was what happens when land is abandoned of all people. Weeds go everywhere, grow everywhere. And it will become like pasture land for cattle and overtrodden land for sheep. 
Yahweh Elohim's will was going to be done despite all the plans and preparations Syria, Syria, Israel, and Judah might make against it. Continuing in Isaiah, the eighth chapter, the first verse, and that's now, it's getting get deep. Then Yahweh said to me, take yourself a large tablet and write on it with a plain pen. Maher Halal Hash Baz. And I will require reliable witnesses as a witness for me. Anytime Elohim appoints witnesses to a prophecy, that prophecy is going to be profound. Uriah the priest and Zechariah, son of Je Jeberechiah, and I approached the prophetess, and she conceived that was Isaiah's wife. He's pinning down a time for this to happen. And anybody that comes to that history will know it by his son's name. That crazy name. And she conceived and she gave birth to a son. And Yahweh said to me, Call his name Maher Halal Hashbaz. For before the boy knows to call my father and my mother, one will carry away the wealth of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria in the presence of the king of Assyria. And Yahweh continued to speak to me again because this people has refused the gently flowing waters of Shiloh and rejoices over Rezin and the son of Ramalia. Therefore, look, Yahweh is bringing up the waters of the great and mighty river against them. In prophecy, the waters rising is the people rising against you. And he will rise above all his channels and he will flow over all his banks and he will sweep into Judah. He will overflow and he will flood up to the neck. He will reach and he will spread his wings out over your entire land. Yahweh Elohim with us. Hmm? Where have you heard that before? Yahweh Elohim with us. Be broken, you peoples, and be dismayed and listen all distant parts of the earth. Gird yourselves and be dismayed. Gird yourselves and be dismayed. Note that he said that twice. The Bible doesn't waste a word. Make a plan, verse 10, but it will be frustrated. Speak a word but it will not stand. For Yahweh Elohim is with us. What's he talking about? Willis. By this time in history, the Messiah as a babe will be present. But it will not stand for Yahweh Elohim is with us. Verse 11. For Yahweh said this to me while his hand weighed heavily on me, and he warned me not to walk in the way of this people, saying, You must not call conspiracy everything that this people calls conspiracy. 
and you not, must not share its fear and you must not be in dread. Sounds like now, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Verse 13. You shall regard Yahweh of hosts as holy. And he is your fear. And he is your dread. And he will become like a sanctuary and a stumbling stone and like a stumbling rock for the two houses of Israel, like a trap and a snare for the inheritance, inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many shall stumble among them and they shall fall and they shall be broken and they shall be ensnared and they shall be caught. Bind up the testimony. Seal the teaching among my disciples. What, my what? <laughs> Haven't heard that word in the Old Testament much, have you? They called them something else. Prophets. And these are the men. Bind up the testimony. Seal the teaching among my disciples and I will wait for Yahweh who hides his face for the house of Jacob and I will await him. Look, I and the children whom Yahweh has given to me are like signs and portents in Israel from Yahweh of hosts, the one who dwells on the mountain of Zion. This is an end time prophecy. That's the highest point on the earth at that time, Zion. Verse 19. And when they shall say to you, seek to the mediums and to wizards and to peep and to those who peep and mutter, should not a people seek to their Elohim or their God? Then for the living, to the dead to the law and to the testimony if they do not speak according to this word it is because no light is in them and they shall pass through it hard pressed and hungry and it shall be they shall be hungry. They shall rave and curse their king and their Elohim and look upward and they look up right in his face when they rebel against him. That hasn't happened yet. And they shall look to the land and behold trouble and darkness and gloom of anguish and they are driven into darkness. We know that Yeshua is the stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. We find that in 1 Peter, the second chapter, the sixth verse. 1 Peter, the second chapter, the sixth verse. Therefore, also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes in him shall never be ashamed. Never be ashamed. Verse 7. Therefore, to you who believe is the honor. But to those who are disobedient, he is the, is the stone which the builders rejected. And this one came to be the head of the corner. 
verse 8. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to those disobeying who stumble at the word to which they also were appointed. They are appointed the word, but they didn't keep it. This is a strong statement of the deity of Yeshua Messiah. Because clearly in Isaiah, the 18th, 8th chapter, the 13th verse, Yahweh Elohim of hosts is the stone. And clearly in continuity, saying that Yeshua is the coming Messiah. Continuing in Isaiah, the ninth chapter, the first verse. But there will be no gloom for those who were in distress. In former times, he treated the land of Zebulun and Naphtali in contempt. But in the future, he will honor the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. Galilee of the nations. Verse two. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Light has shined on those who lived in a land of darkness. You have made the nations numerous. You have not made the nation the, the Make, made the joy great. They rejoice in your presence as with joy at the harvest, as they rejoice when they divide plunder. For they have shattered the yoke of its burden and the stick of its shoulder. The rod of its oppressor on the day of Midian for every boot that marches and shakes the earth and garment rolled in blood will be for burning, fire for fuel. For a child has been born for us. A son has been given to us and the dominion will be on his shoulder. And now it's become crystal clear he, who he's talking about. And his name is called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty Elohim, Everlasting Prince, Father, Prince of Peace. Anybody don't know who this is now? Verse seven, his dominion will grow continually and to peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and sustain it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts will do this. Yahweh Elohim has sent out a word against Jacob and it fell on Israel. Why? They never obeyed him. He had no choice but to fall on them with his whole weight. Verse nine, and all of the people who knew it, Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria in pride and arrogance of heart saying, the bricks have fallen, but we will build with dressed stone. I remember something like this. Somebody said when 911 happened, we'll build it back better. And they said the same thing about this virus they haven't done anything about in two years. The bricks have fallen, but we will build with dressed stone. The sycamore trees were felled, but we will replace them with cedars. What did 
Yahweh Elohim tell you to plant there? Sycamore. You're going to replace them with what? Cedar. <laughs> Verse 11. So Yahweh strengthened the adversaries of raisin against him, and he provoked his enemies. Aram from the east and Philistines from the west and they devoured Israel with the whole mouth and he had not turned away his anger in all of this and his his hand is still stretched out what did that mean I told you last week he's still whooping that thing his, his hand is still stretched out. And the people did not turn to the one who struck it. And they did not seek Yahweh of hosts. So Yahweh cut off head and tail from Israel. Palm branch and reed in one day. Elders and the respectable are the head. And the prophets who tell lies are the tale. And the leaders of this people were misleading them. And largely still are. And those who were led were confused. And that's why everybody's getting a second chance among those who have not come across Yeshua Messiah. Verse 17. Therefore Yahweh Elohim did not rejoice over its young men and he did not have compassion on its orphans and widows and for everyone was godless and an evildoer and every mouth was speaking folly. In all of this, his anger did not turn away, and his hand is still stretched out. For wickedness burned like fire. It consumed briar and thorn, and it kindled the thickets of the forest, and they swirled upward in a column of smoke. Verse 19, the land was burned through the wrath of Yahweh of hosts and the people became like fuel for a fire. People had no compassion toward each other. Sound familiar? That's why he said it twice. It's going to happen just this way in the end time. A little few twists, but we'll run into those in Revelation a little bit later on. Verse 20, they devoured on the right, but still were hungry, and devoured on the left, but they were not satisfied. Each one devoured the flesh of his arm. Manasseh devoured Ephraim and Ephraim Manasseh. Together they were against Judah. In all of this, his anger has not turned away. And still his hand is stretched out. And still Israel has not repented to their Elohim. Any questions? Any comments? Mm -mm. Yep. Roll. Any questions? I did. Oh. Mm hmm? Maybe you had a. Oh. 
amazing how they keep doing this over and over again. Just amazing. And as he said, still. Mm -hmm. Still. Looked him in the face. That's like. Doing all this. Not even he would, but your child is looking in your face and whipping his fist at you like he's going to do something to you. And he raises your, and he raises his hand and he's still looking at you like you ain't going to do nothing to me. Bring it back home. That's the way to understand it fully. What's happened here? Ruby. Part of 15, uh, Part of 15 uh, says clearly, where it says, The elders and honorables, he is the head, but the prophets who teach lies mm -hmm. are the tale. For the leaders of these people cause them to err, and those who are led by them are destroyed. And we have this still happening. Mm -hmm. There are still people out here that have no faith in or belief in a God of any type. Sarah. Um, I just wanted to mention something. You were saying early on about the fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me step out. <laughs> um, is that better? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. that was terrible. Okay, sorry. Um, I was looking at a program, well, I've been looking at it for like two weeks, and it's called like the Days of Noah. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I'm mentioning it is because I thought it shed a lot of light. Obviously, there's some things in there that they're promoting, you know, that you have to mm -hmm. discern. Um, but they talked about uh, the fire mm -hmm. and how um, they, they mentioned how the three Hebrew boys, right, mm -hmm. were in the fire and not consumed because mm -hmm. their spirit was fire. They mm -hmm. were not hot and cold. So I thought it was just different, or not different, but um, interesting how you mentioned that um, with how we should be on mm -hmm. fire. Um, and it also kind of goes into how... Uh, how they said, and, and I, I could be very wrong, but I'm still researching. Um, it says that the reason why we cannot get close to God or to Elohim because we are not like him yet. Our fire is not like him. We don't have the fire. Something is blocking it. Right. You're not, you're not, you're not going to have it in this flesh anyway. Right, exactly. But you can get close enough to it to get part of it. And, and right, and they mentioned to not be burned by it. That was mm. the important part that I wanted to mention. Yeah. And if you think about it, the quencher is the people of the world that are, try, that are mm -hmm. uh, showing you all these negative things that causes your spirit to be quenched. And, and that's where that fire doesn't it's not persistent because everywhere we look, our spirits want to get quenched by the evil out in the world. Mm -hmm. Half of the stuff on TV now is quenching your spirit and you don't even know it. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Yeah, that's the no zone right there. Anything, anything in front of those speakers is going to impact the speaker in a hideous way. Yeah. <laughs> it's piercing. It's piercing. Develop? Yeah. What you were saying, uh, what we were about the, the head and the tail and the people that's leading them will be leading them to go astray. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that was that it was meaning the people that know better and talking something Supposed else. to. The Pharisees. Yeah. The Pharisees, basically. Yeah, for the money. Mm-hmm. And they're doing it today. Mm hmm For the money. Mm hmm Like I, I said once before, 
I knew someone that knew better mm -hmm. and knew about the Sabbath and Holy Day. But he said he can't do that because of the mm -hmm. money. The money will drop. Now he's gonna he's gonna get it for leading all them people astray. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know better than that, right? Yes. You're gonna get yours. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any more? Any more online? All right, that's it.